Hey everybody, let's go ahead and let's look at one of these vibration problems out of the dynamics book by Hibbler. Alright, so this is from Hibbler and it's the 15th edition. And it's dynamics, I guess I need to put that on here. Okay, so that's the textbook this came from. Alright, so what we've got is a uniform rod of mass M and it's supported by this pin at A and we've got a spring here at B. Now B is going to be given a small, keyword here is small, sideward displacement and it's going to be released. And then we want to find the natural period of vibration. So let's assume in this state right here the spring is at its natural length, right? So it's just, it's not stretched or compressed, it's just sitting here and this rod's resting up against it. Um, and then we're going to push it to the right a little bit. All right, so it's going to compress a little. And then um, we'll see what it does. All right, so first thing we want to do on here is draw a free body diagram because I've got to get an equation of motion. Okay, so let's, let's do that first and then we'll go from there. All right, so there is the rod. And now let's put our forces on here. All right, we've got a pin at A. So if we have a pin at A, what would we get? Well, remember, a pin allows rotation about the pin axis, but no translation. So we're going to have an AX and an AY. I'm just picking those directions. Now, we also have a mass here, M. So we want to put weight on here. So it's going to be a G, so right at the center of the uniform rod. So it'll be MG. And then last thing, if we move this to the right a little bit, which is what this diagram is supposed to show here, we're going to have a spring force going to the left. So now we've got that. Okay, now let's draw our lengths and angles on here. So let's put this, and let's say that this angle here is theta, right? And from here to here, this is L over 2, and here to here is L over 2 because G is right in the center, okay? So there is our um, diagram, and this angle here is also theta. Now let's think about how we can get our equation of motion. So this is for free undamped motion, this section right here. So remember we have the standard form of the equation of motion that we're looking for, all right? And Let's just use y for our variable here for the standard form. So we're going to have y double dot. Notice that's an acceleration if y is like a displacement. Plus, we've got an omega n squared. That's our natural frequency squared times y equals 0. Right. So again, this is for free undamped motion. All right, once you add damping and all of that, it changes it. But this is just the standard form that we want. Okay, so I'm wanting something that looks like this, a differential equation that looks like this, for this system here. Okay, now why I just use that as just a basic variable there just to write out this equation. What we're going to use though is theta because this is a rotation problem, right? So theta is our angular displacement. And so instead of using a y, we'll use a theta. Okay, now we know this is just pure rotation because we're just rotating about a. Right? So because of that, then the equation we're going to use to get our equation of motion is going to be the moment equation. So we're rotating about A. So let's do the sum of the moments about A equals IA alpha. All right, where alpha is our angular acceleration. And let's make counterclockwise positive like I always do. Okay, so we've got that. Now what we need to do before we do anything, let's go ahead and find IA. And that's going to come from the table in the back of the book. So, if we pull that out, we know it's a uniform slender rod right here. And we have two choices, right? We can take the I value about G or about the little prime axis here at the bottom. So similar to ours, we're rotating about a point on the end. So we can go ahead and use the 1 3rd ML squared. All right, so let's pick that one for I. All right, so IA is going to be one third ML squared. Okay, so we've got that. Now let's go ahead and do this equation. So our moment's about A. A is up here at the top. And 
since we're taking the moment about A, the AX and AY, those don't matter, right? But weight and the spring force do matter. So let's look at the spring force first. So if this is my force, it's in a horizontal direction, if I'm going to take the moment about A, then I need this distance here, right? Got to have that vertical distance because that's perpendicular to the force. Okay, now how can we find that? I know this is L. We've got this angle theta. So I'm thinking we could write our moment for the spring as FSP, and then the distance then could be L cosine theta. Right? And we got to do our sine. So this is going to the right, so that is a clockwise rotation, so that will be negative. So that is the spring. Okay, now one more thing, moment here. We need this weight. So we've got a vertical force, so I need this distance here, right? Because that takes us to A. So this one, the force is going to be mg, and then our distance is going to be basically going from g over to here. So that's going to be L over 2 cosine, or not cosine, L over 2 sine theta. Whoops, not on watch, but 3. So L over 2 sine theta. Okay. And now is that positive or negative? Well, if we look at it, if we hold it at A, we pull it down, it's got to go clockwise, so that's going to be a minus. Okay. And then that'll equal 1 third ML squared. And then alpha, instead of putting alpha like we always do, we want to write everything in terms of theta, because theta is our displacement variable. So let's do theta double dot, because theta double dot equals alpha, right? Because if theta is my angular displacement, theta dot would be angular velocity, theta double dot is angular acceleration, okay? Now everything is in terms of theta here, which is what we wanted, okay? And last thing I want to do, let's look at this spring force, right? Because I just left it as S, FSP here. But we actually have an equation that we could use for spring force, right? So let's figure out what that would be. So usually we say it's Kx, where x is the stretch or compression, right? Okay, well, initially it's unstretched. It's at its natural length. And then we're going to push it in a little bit, right? So we need to figure out what that distance would be, okay? So we're going to have k, spring constant, and then the distance we push it in is going to basically be the distance from here over here, right? Because if I take this and I'm going like over to here, we want that distance there because that would be the compression amount, right? So if we do that, we're going to have this length L sine theta. So that there would be L sine theta. And then that would end up being our compression amount for that spring. Okay. So now we can take this, plug it in here. So let's do that next. Okay. So we're going to have negative K. Notice I've got two L's, so I'm just going to put L squared. And then we've got the um, sine theta, cosine theta. And then let's finish writing out the rest here. All right, and then our right side, one third ml squared theta double dot. Okay, so now we've got that, and let's go ahead, and if you look, we have a substitution we can make here. So we've got sine times cosine. So if we remember way back from pre-cal, we know sine 2 theta is equal to 2 sine theta, cosine theta, right? So we've got that. So I can replace this with sine 2 theta, which needs to divide by 2. Okay. So we're going to have negative KL squared over 2 sine 2 theta, All right? So basically, just solve for this, right? And that gives you the sine. 2 theta over 2, which is what we have here. 
All right, and then the rest of this just you can continue writing that out. Okay, so now we've got that. And notice I was using the little lowercase l, and these were capital L. It's the same L. So just switch letters. All right, so now we've got this. I want this form, though. Okay, so I want all of the theta terms on one side. All right, so I've got theta here, here, and here. So let's um, put everything on one side. Okay, so if I do that, I can make everything positive because I can move these two over. So let's go ahead and move these over. So we get the one third ml squared theta double dot term plus kl squared over two sine two theta plus mgl over two sine theta equals zero. Okay. Now I know right now you're thinking, okay, but this doesn't look anything like this, right? Because we've got these signs in here, right? Well, if you remember when we read through the problem statement, I underlined the word small. Okay, and that's because we're going to be able to use small angle theory here. And what that basically tells us is if our angle is really small, like what we're assuming here, then I can make an approximation for my trig functions. So I can say sine of theta is approximately equal to theta. And the reason for that is a sine of zero is zero, right? So if we take sine of a really, really small angle, we can say it's approximately equal to that angle. Same thing goes for sine two theta. We can approximate that as just two theta. And then, just in case you need it later on, cosine theta you can approximate to be one because cosine of zero is one, right? So if we're doing a really small angle, we can just set that equal to one, okay? So let's make these substitutions here and see what we get. Okay, so first term stays the same. And then now we're going to have the KL squared over 2. Replace the sine 2 theta with 2 theta. Notice the 2's cancel. And then we have plus MGL over 2. Sine theta turns into theta. Equals 0. So now if you look, it's looking a little bit closer to this. Right? i got theta double dot, and then I've just got theta by itself now. So both of these terms have theta, so let's group up our terms. All right, first term here doesn't change. And then this one will end up being um, whoops, KL squared plus MGL over 2 times theta equals 0. So we're getting there. We want this form, though. Notice coefficient here on this term is 1. We don't have that yet, so I need to divide through by 1 third ML squared. Let's divide both of these. Okay, and if we do that, this takes us to theta double dot, which is what we want. And then over here, once you um, do the algebra, you end up getting 3mg plus 6kl over 2ml times theta. And then that's zero on the right side. Okay, so this is our equation of motion. So an equation of motion is just basically a second order differential equation, or it could be first order, um, but it can be used to describe the motion of our system. So in this case, the rod. Okay, so now we've got that. Now notice here, because we're looking for natural period of vibration, um, this term is known as the natural frequency squared. Okay, so that means this here is omega n squared, right? So my equation for the uh, period there is going to be 2 pi over omega n. Okay, so I just need to find omega n from this, plug it in here. Okay, so if this is omega n squared, then omega n has to be the square root of 3mg plus 6kl over 2ml. And then we can take this, plug it in the denominator here.
All right. And then now, you know, you don't usually want to leave fractions in the denominator, so we can flip it upside down and then write it as 2 pi times the square root of 2ml over 3mg plus 6kl. And then that would be our natural period of vibration. Right? So basically that's how long it takes to do one cycle. Right? Because if this is going to hit this spring, if we look at the, uh, the motion of the rod there, it's going to, you know, push the spring in, the spring's going to push it out, and it's going to keep repeating over and over and over again. So the period would be this time it takes to go from here to here, for instance. All right, so that's how you do that one. Key thing on this, free body diagram. Notice if it's rotation or translation. If it's rotation like this one, you use your moment equation, right? Um, if it's translation, you can use um, a force equation to get your free body diagram. Or not your free body diagram, your equation of motion, okay? The key is you want everything in this form if you've got a free undamped system. All right, hopefully that helped. I will see you all next time.